and clomiphene in mild IVF. And the question will be asked is why? Now surprisingly, the benefit of clomiphene is that clomiphene also acts as an antagonist and the risk of premature ovulation if you gave clomiphene continuously is very limited and small. Now, in addition, I'll say, what does clomiphene do? And clomiphene gives you a slightly sustained rise of FSH, which certain poor responders and, and women with a smaller antral follicle count of follicles which are larger in size into four and six millimeter may respond better rather than giving uh, you know huge doses of gonadotrophins and this was done from a paper which was uh, published and it is quite a good uh, paper looking at around about four cycles of stimulation with clomiphene so let, let's look at this study and this study lo looked at whether just using clomiphene for stimulation would give an acceptable chance of a live birth rate. And this was from January 2009 to December 2009, uh, 19, sorry, and uh, 3,281 patients, clomiphene of 50 to 100 milligram from day three to the day of the trigger. And that's important. You do not give it for five days. You give it continuously. And that seems to give a much better uh, in a switching off of the pituitary and LH does not get released to create ovulation. No FSH and H HMG given, trigger or general IH. Analog bisarillin, if a fresh transfer, then HCG. Uh, added and a fresh transfer done with day three embryos, 50% and day five embryos at 43.3%. The overall successful USAT retrieval was in 86.2% of cases and the overall live birth rate was 27% of cases. So it seems that uh, in about 15% of cases, you do not get oocytes. Now, that is the data here, but if you look at the overall data, it seems that if you give clomiphene, the chance of having spontaneous ovulation and overriding the effect of clomiphene ranges anywhere between two and 5%. And that's quite good considering that the antagonist failure may be closer to 1%. And if you look at the live birth rates, and the younger patients tended to do better. Uh, and as women got older, the chances of pregnancy went down. So if you look at the final data, we look at live birth rate per oocyte, under 34 was 24%, but 35 and 37, 15%, 38 to 40, 10%, 41 to 42, 4.9%, and over 43 years, 2%. So you see a, 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 you know, a steady decline in live birth rates at age advances. Over the age of 40, live birth rates are significantly lower. So, and if you'd say, why is this paper very important? And I'll, I'll put it this way, I'll say one, clomiphene is cheap. In some cases, high doses of gonadotrophins give you, gives you one or two sites. I don't see the point of spending a lot of money or time trying to add gonadotrophins and then clomiphene on its own is likely to elicit the same response along with the same safety and may as long as you tell your patients that there may be a 10 to 15% risk of not getting any eggs, and especially in poor responders, I think you may be able to use this protocol. Thank you very much.